Izuku is currently on his knees in the sand with his eyes shut. He was focusing on gathering as much ki as he could in order to attack Gaku, who was waiting about 20 feet away from him. Gaku was smiling as he watched his student control his ki to make it flow into his hands, he's been doing great so far. It's hard to believe that it's only been three months since we started. Just as Gaku had implied, it's been three months since he started training Izuku and the boy has made some great progress so far. The two of them spent the first week pushing the junk on the beach around to build up a bit of physical strength. On the second week of training, Gaku taught Izuku how to dodge physical attacks with a simple sidestep technique. It allows the user to move their feet in a way that allows them to dodge to the side of an opponent to avoid their attack. The first half of the third week was spent pushing the junk away again, while the second half was spent teaching Izuku how to throw proper punches and kicks. He taught Izuku how to stand, when to strike, and how to use as much power as he could in order to hit hard. However, he also informed him that he shouldn't use all of his power in each strike, as it will tire him out too quickly. The fourth week was spent practicing everything that Izuku had learned over and over again multiple times. Gaku explained that by repeating the same movement enough times, Izuku's body will memorize the techniques and will be able to use them faster and stronger. The first month had passed by them fairly quickly. Which allowed Gaku to use the first week of the second month to teach Izuku about the vulnerable points of the human body. Gaku taught him where to hit, why each point would cause pain, and how to hit them. He allowed Izuku to test this out by letting himself be attacked by the boy and was hit in every weak area. Once the first week of the second month had pasted them, the two of them spent the first day of the sixth week repeating everything that Izuku learned that first month into one day. Gaku was very impressed with how his new student had learned so quickly. The rest of the week was spent moving more trash from the beach again. Gaku was nearly finished, but with Izuku being fairly new to training his body, he was falling behind in his cleaning. It was discouraging to the young teen, but Gaku reminded him that he had been training his body for years, while Izuku himself was just getting started. The rest of that second month was used to teach Izuku all about Ki. Gaku had given the boy a much better explanation than he did when the two of them first met. Ki is energy inside every living being, including plants, that is mostly found in the center of the body. By drawing it out, the individual is able to manipulate it and use it outside of the body. Ki can be used to create offensive, defensive, and physical enhancing techniques. Users can also gain more key throughout training, the more key a user has the harder it is to control. However, if the user trains to gain perfect key control, they can become far more powerful. Another interesting thing about key is that it can be used by anyone, including individuals with quirks. But quirks can slow down the process of learning how to use key. Gaku describes quirks as brick walls in learning how to use key. Getting past the wall is possible, but very time-consuming. When compared to individuals like him and Izuku who are quirkless, it's easy to say that quirkless people are the fastest learners when it comes to key control, since they don't have a wall in the first place. Once that explanation was over with, the rest of the week was spent teaching and training Izuku in unlocking his own key, which was deep inside the center of his body. In order to unlock it, Gaku had Izuku hold his hands together, which made it look like he was praying. Gaku then placed his hands on Izuku's back and began to search throughout the inside of the teen's body in order to find out where all the unawakened power was hiding. One way that a person can unlock their key for the first time is having an experienced key user use their own key to search for the key that's stored inside the body of the beginner. The key of the individuals then connect with each other and have the more powerful key pull the weaker one out of the body of the beginner. However, what happened when Gaku and Izuku tried this method was, well, they were successful. But the two of them ended up gaining a big surprise out of it. Flashback Both Gaku and Izuku were sitting cross-legged in the sand in order to activate Izuku's key from inside his body. Gaku had his hand placed on his student's back in order to search for his key. Once he found it, he then began to slowly pull it out by connecting his key with Izuku's. 
The task, however, proved to be more difficult than he had expected it to be. Why is his key not coming out already, he thought to himself. Gaku kept on using his key to try and pull out the key in Izuku's body. It was getting kinda hard until he suddenly felt that it was working. Boom! Ah! cried Gaku. He was blasted backwards from the force of the key that exploded out of Izuku's body. He then looked up to see that the boy was now surrounded by white key that looked to be very powerful. Gaku! Are you alright? asked Izuku as he got up and turned around to approach his teacher. I'm better than all right. I unlocked your key, smiled Gaku as he looked at the white key that was now surrounding his student. Really? asked the excited green-haired boy. You bet. Now we start by teaching you how to control it, replied Gaku as he placed his hands on both of Izuku's shoulders. Izuku smiled at this. After finally learning that he wasn't as powerless as everyone around him made him out to be, he could finally start working hard in order to achieve his dream of becoming a hero. Now, we just got to work on your strength, mind, and courage, and once we take care of that you'll be using key properly just fine explained Gaku. Flashback ends. They never really found an explanation as to why Izuku's key exploded out of his body. Gaku explained that it usually doesn't work that way and the key should have come out slowly, not in a big explosion. They decided to let it slide and not worry about it. The rest of the second month was also spent teaching Izuku how he can gain more confidence and become a little braver. Key may be energy from inside the body, but it's made up of three parts, vigor slash physical strength, courage, and mind. Izuku was already a very intelligent kid for his age, so the mind part was already taken care of. Moving all of the junk that was on his side of the beach so far had made Izuku build up a bit of muscle, therefore, taking care of the vigor part. The difficult part was taking care of courage. Izuku is was not exactly the bravest person, and is still suffering from that. He also lacks a bit of confidence as well. Gaku realized that it had something to do with that Katsuki Bakugo kid that always makes Izuku feel bad about himself for being quirkless. Gaku decided that the first key technique that he was going to teach Izuku is one that will prevent him from getting hurt by Katsuki's explosions. If Izuku can't get hurt by the blonde's quirk anymore, then he won't be as scared and could start to stand up for himself. He also taught him a mantra for both of them to use during meditation and for seeking confidence. All he has to do is repeatedly say, this means nothing. If he repeats that line while he's scared, his fear will slowly decrease and be replaced by confidence. It will also help him deal with all of the insults that are thrown at him by Katsuki and his classmates. The two of them are now currently on month three of training. Last week was spent teaching Izuku the defensive technique that will help him not get hurt by Katsuki's explosions. He managed to learn it in just four days of three-hour training. Which meant he learned it in just twelve hours. However, Gaku wasn't sure if it was strong enough to keep the blonde bully's explosions from hurting Izuku just yet, so they'll have to train with it a bit longer to increase its power. This leads us straight to today. Izuku is now practicing the new move that he learned about two days ago. His left hand was covered in bright yellow key that was forming into a sphere. Once he finished charging it up, Izuku fired it at his teacher. Key Blast The yellow sphere turned into a yellow beam that shot out of Izuku's hand and straight at Gaku at a high speed. But the black-haired adult wasn't worried at all as he then used the back of his left hand to smack it away from him. Izuku looked at how his teacher was easily able to deflect his attack and was amazed by it. He was also amazed at how his key blast was a bit faster than his first one from two days ago. Wow! Gaku's training method really is working for me, he thought to himself. As already explained. If you practice at something that you already know, you'll be able to make it stronger than before. Which is why Gaku had Izuku repeat everything he's learned during training to make it stronger. Gaku started to approach Izuku with a smile on his face. That was awesome, Izuku. You really got the hang of this faster than I expected you to. 
the green-haired teen felt proof from the praise he was getting from his teacher. It was nice to have someone other than his mom give him praise when he does something great. He hardly ever gets that feeling from anyone else, since being quirkless has its downsides. Thank you, Gaku. That means a lot, he replied while bowing his head. Only to had his teacher place his right hand on his head and bring his head up to face him. I told you to stop with the bowing your head thing. I don't need it since I'm helping you as a friend, and not just your teacher. Gaku smiled at his student slash friend. Izuku was still finding it hard to believe that his personal trainer also calls himself his friend. He didn't have any friends since everyone found out that he was quirkless all the way back in preschool, so having an adult say that he was his friend was strange, but very welcoming. Sorry, I keep on forgetting he apologized. Gaku removed his hand from the boy's head and decided it was time to see how much he had grown over the last three months of training. He walked away from the boy until he was about 30 meters away from him. He then turned around and got into a fighting stance that showed that he was ready for action. Izuku knew what that meant and got into a stance of his own. The two stared at each other as they waited for one of them to make the first move. It was so quiet that the only sound that could be heard was the waves that were crashing into the shores of the beach. Gaku's stance had him put his right arm in front of him and left arm up slightly behind him. His fingers were a bit bent as well so he could catch an attack in them. He also bent his legs a bit to lower his body. A slash N, same stance that he used in his battle against Vegeta in the Sien Saga. Izuku's stance had his left arm out with a fist while having his right arm bent back with his right hand in a palm that was turned upside down. His left leg was pointed had his foot pointing at Gaku ahead of him, while his right foot was turned to the right. The two of them kept in their stances for a while before they then decided to get started. Gaku used the strength in his legs to leap towards Izuku to get the match started. Next day. Izuku was walking to school on his fine morning to go about his day as an average teenager in his life. Well, about as average as a quirkless guy's day can get. He arrived at the gates of Aldera Junior High and was about to wall. Move it, D.E.K.U., yelled an angry voice. Izuku's spine started to shiver as he quickly moved to the right to make a path for the angry shouter that called him out. He turned his head to see Katsuki Bakugo and his two lackeys walking past him. Izuku looked at Katsuki's bandaged up left arm that had a bandage wrapped around his neck to keep his left arm up. It had been like that for the past three months. Katsuki appeared at school with his arm bandaged up the day after everyone found out he and Izuku were applying for U.A., he told Izuku to jump off of the school and commit suicide, Izuku was attacked by the sludge villain and met Gaku. No one knew about those last two but Izuku himself. It turned out that they were attacked by a street mugger on the way home. Katsuki was super angry at the two lackeys for blurting it out, because now it made him look bad. The mugger was really strong and had an earth quirk of some kind that helped him defeat Katsuki. The blonde swore revenge that that mugger and vowed to rip him apart the second his arm was better. Ever since then, he hasn't physically harmed Izuku. It was most likely that he wanted to wait until his arm healed up and he could get his revenge on the mugger that he'll start to go back to hurting the quirkless teen. He must prefer to hurt me with both of his hands instead of just one. Izuku thought to himself. Don't look down on me just because I'm down an arm, Deku. As soon as I get that punk who took my money, I'll remind you who I'm going to become the greatest hero ever. Enjoy your peace will it last, warned Katsuki. Izuku nodded his head to reply without saying a word. He needed to make sure that Katsuki didn't notice any changes in him, or else he'll start to get suspicious about how he suddenly became braver. If that were to happen, the blonde would surely try to beat the answers out of him. Gaku warned him that his defensive technique wasn't strong enough to take on Katsuki's explosions yet. So he'll have to act like his normal scared self in order to avoid conflict until the technique was strong enough. This means nothing, this means nothing, this means nothing, this means nothing. Izuku repeated to himself in his mind. He was amazed at how that mantra actually worked. 
it makes him less scared just as Gaku had promised. With Katsuki and the others out of sight, Izuku started to continue his walk towards the school building to start the day. He was really looking forward to when school was over so that he could get to training with Gaku again later. A few hours later, Izuku was on his way towards Dagobo Municipal Beach Park to meet up with Gaku for their daily training. He was lucky that he had no homework today. That meant he could focus more on his training with Gaku. He decided to go through a park that he found near the beach as a shortcut to get to the beach faster. While it's true that the training Gaku puts him through is hard, the results are well worth the effort. Izuku entered through the park entrance with the name of it over his head on a sign that said Environmental Central Park. Strangest name for a park I've ever seen thought our green-haired protagonist. He just shrugged it off and walked on the dirt path that led him into the park. He failed to notice the set of eyes that were watching him. Five minutes later. Izuku was enjoying the scenery that the park had to offer. He looked around to see many green trees that looked strong and healthy. He realized that the name Environmental Central Park made sense now. This place sure is a breath of fresh air. It's nice to come here to get away from the busy city he smiled. It's a shame that you won't be able to enjoy it in peace unless you do as I tell you to, said a new voice from behind Izuku. Izuku was surprised by the new voice that suddenly appeared behind him, but when he turned around he barely had time to look at the person's face before. Bam! Rack! Izuku cried out in pain from the surprise attack that sent him flying from the impact and landed on his back in the grass. He looked up and saw that a piece of the dirt was standing up in the form of a brown dirt pillar. Which was probably what hit him. After seeing it, he then turned his head over to see a man that was probably his assaulter. The man looked to be fairly tall and was probably about 187 centimeters in height. He had his black hair tied up in a ponytail and a black beard on his face. He had white fair skin that could be seen in areas with no hair, like his gray eyes. For clothes, he wore a pair of jeans, a white t-shirt with a few stains of red blood, and a trench coat over the shirt. Izuka quickly got up and got into his fighting position. He closed his left fist and stuck out his left arm as well. While the right arm bent back and right hand was opened in a palm, which was facing down. The left foot was pointing at the assaulter and the right one was facing the right. It looks like this kid knows how to fight without his quirk. Impressive, but it won't save him, thought the man as he looked at Izuku in his stance. He was indeed impressed by how the boy knew a stance like that, which meant that he was a close-range fighter and he needed to keep his distance from him if he hoped to win this possible upcoming fight. What do you want? asked Izuku a bit nervously. The man replied to the question, all the money that you got. Hand it over and I won't hurt ya, kid. Izuku realized that this guy was a mugger and was trying to rob him. He knew that he needed to find a way to get out of here fast. He'll have to try his best to fight this man off. This was his first fight, so it was time to see if all of his training with Gaku had paid off. This means nothing, this means nothing, this means nothing, this means nothing, this means nothing. Izuku repeated in his mind. He did the mantra that Gaku had taught him in order to gain courage. He smiled as it was starting to work a bit as his fear of the man in front of him lessened a bit. I won't let you take me lightly, he replied. The mugger knew that this meant that this kid was going to fight him. He just sighed at the boy's stubbornness to cooperate, hard way it is then. Earth spikes. The mugger slammed his right foot into the ground which caused a bunch of sharp looking spikes made out of the dirt to pop out of the ground and head for Izuku at a fast rate. Izuku's eyes widened when he saw the spikes of dirt head straight for him. It was then made clear that this man's quirk involved the earth around him. But he'll worry about that later since he's in a fight. He thrust out his right arm and right palm along with it. His palm was full of yellow key to enhance its striking power for more damage. Once it made contact with the spikes of dirt that were in front of him they shattered into tiny pieces. The mugger was completely caught by surprise from what he just saw. Somebody managed to destroy his earth spikes. 
Key Blast Izuku fired a yellow sphere of key at the mugger from his already extended palm and watched it fly through the air until it reached its target. It hit the man right in the stomach and sent him flying back from the impact of the blast. R-A-G-H, he yelled in pain as he hit the ground on his back. Never before had his earth spikes been destroyed by others. But this kid managed to do just that. Izuka realized that this was the opening he needed to escape. He turned around and started to run to get far away from this man. His trip was cut short as the dirt in front of him rose up and created a brown wall that prevented him from going any further. It was clear that this man was not going to let him off so easily, so it looked like the fight was just beginning. Before he was even given a chance to react, Izuka found his feet buried in the dirt as it moved to cover his red shoes and keep him in place. Dirt lock said the mugger. Now that he had his target right where he wanted him he began to walk up to the kid and was ready to get down to business. What do I do now? I'm stuck here? If I don't t-wait. Could I yes, a strategy suddenly formed in Izuku's head as he walked for the mugger to get close enough to put it into action. I'll admit you're the strongest to have ever lasted this long against me in a battle. But you could have just made this painless by handing over your money to me from the beginning. Instead, you chose to fight and make me use force. You brought this upon yourself, kid, said the mugger. He then lifted his left arm and made a fist with his hand. It was about to hit Izuku in the face, but suddenly. Big fist blower. Pow. Ack. The mugger looked down to see the Izuku's right fist was planted in his stomach. The blow was powerful and caused him to take a few steps back away from the teen and wrapped his arms around his body to ease the pain. His mouth was open due to how great the pain was as a few drops of blood started to fall out from it. Izuku still had his right fist out as he looked at it. This hand was glowing with red vein-like lines seen all over it. This move was known as the big fist blower. A key enhanced fist that makes the impact of the punch five times stronger than a regular punch. I did. Izuku smiled. He had been practicing that move for about two days now with Gaku. It was something fairly simple and didn't take a lot of time to learn. He then looked down at the ground to see that his feet were still buried in the dirt that he was trapped in. He started to pour key into his other fist and slammed both of them into the ground. Bam. The impact was enough to shatter the ground and allow Izuku to pull his feet out from under the dirt, setting him free from the trap. The mugger soon found the strength to stand up again and looked at Izuku with great anger. He was very mad that this wasn't going as it had last time. The last kid he robbed was taken down a lot easier than this one. But unlike the last one, this kid knows how to fight without the aid of his quirk. You're going to regret that big time, kid, shouted the man. He then started to rush at Izuku with his left fist out. Unlike last time, however, his fist was getting covered by stones as they grew out of his skin. Stone Fist The man threw his stone-covered fist at the boy, only for Izuku to use his right hand to catch it. He then twisted his right arm as it held the man's fist, twist his body to the right so that he was facing the same direction as the mugger, placed his left hand on the man's stomach, and used the rest of his strength to lift the man over his shoulder and slam him into the ground. Slam. Izuku saw the chance he needed and started to make a run for it. He hoped that he could run fast enough to lose the man and get to the beach fast enough to lose him. That sadly wasn't going to happen, as the mugger was back in his feet and slammed his hand on the ground, earth pillar. Whoa. Izuku called out as he suddenly watched the grass around him lift him up into the air and formed a pillar made out of dirt. He was now standing on top of the dirt pillar that was about 10 meters tall. He wasn't alone for long either, as the mugger soon made his own earth pillar that was about the same height as Izuku's. He then put his hands on the pillar's surface and used more dirt to connect the two pillars together, which formed a bridge for him to walk on. Now Izuku was trapped with nowhere to run. I'm trapped. I can't jump from up here, or I'll break my legs. It looks like I'll have to fight this guy head on now. It's the only way out of this. 
Izuku looked at the mugger as he walked along his self-made bridge and started getting closer. You're a smart fighter, kid. You lasted longer than that kid with an explosion quirk that I robbed three months ago, but not strong enough to beat me, informed the mugger. Izuku's eyes suddenly widened a bit when he heard the man say explosion quirk. Izuku is a very smart kid, but he didn't need to be too smart to put two and two together. Kakakin? This is the same man that robbed him and broke his arm? And he said that I lasted longer than him. You did make this kind of fun, so I'll tell you my name as a reward. The name Slade. Slade Johnson said the now named Slade. Izuku looked at Slade for a moment and realized that he had his guard down. He saw an opening that he needed and wasted no time using it. He fired a key blast at the dirt bridge and caused dust to kick up, which blocked Slade's view of him. He then started to add more key into his legs and crouched down. Stilled leg sweep. He took a mighty leap and jumped over Slade and the dust cloud. He landed on the other pillar and turned around to see the dust cloud was still there. He knew what he needed to do now. He ran across the bridge and then made his right arm glow to use the big fist blower again. But when he threw the punch his hand was caught by a stone-covered hand. The dust cloud cleared and revealed the slade was now facing him with his left stone hand holding Izuku's right fist, not a bad trick. But still not enough to beat me, he said. Izuku then threw a punch with his left fist, but it was caught just like his other one. Now. Both combatants had their hands full. Which allowed Slade to use his head, literally. He headbutted Izuku, and it was so fast that the boy didn't have time to react as he was then sent off of his feet and landed onto his back. Slade then got on top of him and started to rapidly punch Izuku. But the green-haired teen just used his forearms to shield his face and started to move his body left and right to avoid the punches. Whenever Slade threw a left hook, Izuku would lean his body to the right to avoid it and vice versa. This lasted for 20 seconds until Izuku held out both of his palms at Slade's stomach and fired a key blast from both hands. The impact sent Slade flying off of him as he landed on the other end of the dirt bridge. The two of them got up as fast as they could, but Izuku was the first one up and rushed at Slade again in order to give him and Big Fist Blower to the face and knock him out to end this fight but Slade got up quick enough to extend his left stone fist out. Izuku was moving too fast to react and ran himself into the fist as it landed right in his stomach. A-H-H. He just held his mouth open as he slowly backed away from Slade's stone fist and wrapped his arms around his stomach before dropping to his knees. The pain in which he was in right now made it feel like all the strength in his body just disappeared all at once. And all he felt was the heat of pain in his stomach. To make matters worse, Slade slammed his right foot into Izuku's back, which resulted in the boy landing on his stomach. He let out a cry of pain as he felt his back getting rapidly stepped on by Slade. He tried to get up, but his efforts were in vain. He was in too much pain to get up again. He couldn't get up again. He lost. I warned you what would happen if you didn't listen to me, but you did make this more fun than the blonde kid. It was fun, but you should just empty your wallet now, said Slade as he planted his foot on top of Izuku's back. Maybe you should pick on someone your own size, said a new voice that came from behind Slade. He turned his head to see who the stranger was but... Now. He was sent flying back from the impact of the surprise punch to the face he took. He landed on the pillar that he made earlier and held his left cheek in pain from the blow. Slade looked up to see that whoever hit him had disappeared along with the kid. With Izuku. The green-haired boy was now chowing on a piece of food that could be heard crunching in his teeth. Gaku sat cross-legged beside him as he watched his student swallow the bean. He then felt better when he saw the injuries disappear from Izuku's body. He looked as good as new. Minus the torn up Ikarin. The boy got up into his feet and looked down at his teacher, Thanks, Gaku. You really saved me back there, he thanked. When Izuku didn't arrive for their daily training, Gaku knew that something was holding him up. He used instant transmission to find Izuku and found him in the park fighting Slade. 
No problem, kid. You really needed it after that beat down, replied Gaku as he looked down at his right hand to see three green beans. These little items were called Senza beans. They're green beans that have magical powers that allow anyone who is injured to become fully healed when they ate one. The two of them have used them during training whenever Gaku lands a hit that's too hard for Izuku to handle and needs to heal quickly. As good as these healing items sounded, they also have their drawbacks. Such as being a limited item, their beans just like any other naturally planted food and need to be grown. Which can take up to a month to turn from a seed to a new plant. Secondly, there's a time limit to how much you can eat. The limit is 10 minutes, if anyone eats another sensu bean before 10 minutes after the last one they'll gain a pound in weight. Despite these drawbacks, the sensu beans have proven to be a useful item for training and battle to both Gaku and Izuku. I wish I could have seen him coming sooner, then I could have found a way to win. If only I had just thought of a better strategy sighed Izuku with disappointment. He had spent the last three months training like crazy in order to get strong enough to stand a chance at the U.A entrance exam, but he couldn't even beat a simple street mugger. He gave it his all, but it still wasn't enough. Gaku saw how his student was feeling depressed over his loss. But this was his first real battle and even with his training he wasn't guaranteed a win, Izuku, you shouldn't feel upset over that one loss today. It was your first fight and you did a great job at holding your own. The guy even said that you lasted longer against him than that Bakugo kid he said. Izuku started to feel a bit better after hearing his master's word of encouragement. He would have felt completely better if it wasn't for one little thing, how did you what he said, he asked. Gaku started to scratch the back of his head while chuckling nervously, I may have been hiding behind one was the trees in the park to watch the fight and see how you did on your own. What? Hey, I saved you afterward, didn't I? Plus, I figured out a few ways that you can get stronger in order to prepare in case you ever run into that guy again, reasoned Gaku. Izuku just kept staring at his teacher. He was still upset that Gaku had just left him to fend for himself against Slade. However, Gaku rarely lied about finding ways to improve combat abilities, so if he said that he found a way to help him be more prepared for next time, he must be telling the truth. Well, what do you have in mind, he asked. We need to raise your defense some more in order to make you durable enough to take powerful hits from opponents. Once your defense is strong enough you'll be able to take hit from others who are about three times your size, explained the spiky-haired man. Izuku knew that this meant that they were going to keep on practicing that defensive technique that was going to be used to help him if he ever had to fight Katsuki one day. If it could help him with taking blows from other fighters, then it was one move he had to get right. We're going to spend the next two weeks making your defense stronger so that you can handle hard hits in the future. We'll be practicing it for two hours every day, got it? asked Gaku in a serious voice. When do we start? asked an eager Izuku with a determined smile on his face. Tomorrow. I already had today's training planned out for us, replied Gaku. The two of them walked along the sands of the beach in order to find the perfect spot to train at. 